Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Arthur Sukow. He's joining us here as CEO of DTX Pharma. DTX Pharma is a San Diego-based biotechnology company developing novel RNA-based therapeutics to treat the genetic drivers of rare diseases. He's joining us to talk about the current challenges with RNA therapeutics and the development of a platform called Falcon. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Sukow. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Give us a little bit of your professional background and tell us what led you to your vision of creating uh, DTX Pharma. I, uh, I did my undergrad at University of Delaware in biology, uh, graduate studies at University of California, San Diego uh, in pharmacology. I started my industry career at Johnson & Johnson. We worked quite a bit on, on small molecules uh, in the diabetes space. Uh, some of those molecules targeted uh, fatty acid receptors, and you'll understand why that's important in a second. After that, I moved to AstraZeneca. I was a founding member of a biologics group that also worked in the diabetes space. We worked on antibodies, peptides, all sorts of conjugates. Um, relevant to what we do at DTX, we used to use fatty acid conjugated peptides for half-life extension. And then uh, moved that back out to San Diego. I missed the palm trees and, and the beaches. Mm -hmm. Uh, came across a company called Regulus Therapeutics that was working on RNA therapeutic. And that's kind of where I came to know the RNA therapeutics delivery challenge. And it was sort of a combination of those experiences, uh, working on, in fatty acids and small molecules and, and fatty acid conjugated uh, peptides that led to the inspiration for, for DTX Pharma. I thought there was ways that you could probably leverage fatty acids based on those experience to overcome some of the delivery challenges with, with RNA therapeutics. What exactly are RNA therapeutics? Are there different types? What are they specifically used for? Yeah, there's there's all different flavors of RNA therapeutics. Probably the the most uh, the one that everyone is probably familiar with is you know the, for COVID, where they inject the spike protein or a version of that into the body to generate an immune response. Well, there's there's other flavors as well. There's there's ones that can sort of attenuate the expression of of disease causing genes. So you know. Genetics, if you have mutations, sometimes it leads to the expression of, of unwanted proteins. And for those, there's different flavors of RNA therapeutics. Uh, we call them either siRNAs or antisense molecules. They work by different mechanisms, but the net effect is, is, is largely the same, the inhibition of the disease-causing uh, proteins and so, or, or the, the message and then the, the downstream protein. And so those are, that's the flavor that, that we work on in DTX. Are these particularly challenging therapies when implemented? Yeah, and all of these uh, therapies, you know, the, the antisense has been around since the 80s, siRNA since the 90s. And as a group or as a, a field, we've really struggled to facilitate delivery of these uh, medicines for therapeutic uses. And so... The underlying challenge is really twofold. Uh, one, your cells um, and your body have been trained for years um, or, or millions and millions of years to, to prevent the uptake of, of RNAs or DNAs, um, and that's you know response to viruses. And so the cells just do not effectively take these molecules up. And then the other problem is that once they hit the bloodstream after an injection, either intravenous or subcutaneous injection, is that they're rapidly cleared uh, by the kidney. And so you don't get meaningful exposure of these drugs in tissues that have you know, the underlying genetic lesions that we're trying to attenuate the expression of. So muscle, heart, et cetera, do not really see these drugs. And so where we were kind of pre-DTX Pharma as a field was, a sugar had been discovered called Galmec, and that had been really successful enabling delivery to the liver, but nowhere else. And, and you've heard of companies probably like, or, or many people may have heard of companies successfully have been able to deploy those for a number of, of uh, liver or hepatic indications. Now, it's my understanding that DTX has generated a, a platform overcoming some of the challenges with the RNA delivery. Tell us what this platform is and briefly explain the science behind it. Yeah, and so the platform, we call it Falcon. It's actually named after my high school mascot. It, it's called Fatty Acid 
ligand conjugated oligonucleotides. And oligonucleotides is just a fancy way of saying siRNA um, or antisense. And so the reason we were attracted to fatty acids as a solution uh, is really because it addresses those two, pr those two problems that I just um, discussed uh, with, with one sort of shot on goal. And so fatty acids, every cell in your body has a mechanism to take up fatty acids. And so you can imagine leveraging these mechanisms, typically receptors or transporters that interact with the fatty acid ligand to trick the cell into bringing these molecules into the cell so that it can do its thing, repress the expression of disease-causing uh, genes. The other um, advantage of fatty acids uh, is that they're a tried and true mechanism to promote the biodistribution of a related class of molecules, peptides. And in that field, there's actually four multi-billion dollar drugs, uh, many of which uh, your audience has probably heard of. Uh, there's commercials, insulin detamir, insulin degludec, liraglutide, semaglutide. They leverage these fatty acids for half-life extension. And the way those drugs work is they interact with a protein in the blood called albumin. And albumin kind of, you can think of it as like an Uber driver that enables you to have more rides around the circulation and more opportunities to see the target tissues of those drugs. And so the net effect for those, that class of molecules is you can take a, an insulin or GLP-1 that would be cleared by the circulation or kidney in a few minutes and you can get them to last as much as a week in the circulation. So that's a lot more opportunities for these um, drugs to see their target. And so we sort of um, hijacked, if you will, uh, some of those me known mechanisms to and apply those to RNA therapeutics. Talk a bit about some of your upcoming milestones. What's next for DTX Pharma? And then give us a website where we can learn more. Yeah, so um, with respect to uh, the milestones, we're, we're going after uh, a rare peripheral neuropathy called CMT1A. Our goal is to meet with the FDA in the next month or so and bring that into patients sometime toward the middle of, of next year with the goal of generating proof of concept in the clinic in 2024. We've got a, a host of, of other programs where we're hoping to nominate uh, candidates that we bring into the clinic in, in 2024 and 2025. Uh, with respect to, to where you can find uh, more information about DTX Pharma, our website is www.dtxpharma.com. And we, of course, have um, LinkedIn and, and Twitter accounts that, that leverage DTX Pharma as well. Dr. Sukow, I really appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for your time, and hopefully you'll come back and we can uh, talk a bit more about the developments there at DTX Pharma. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Arthur Sukow. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.